Our forests, places of peace and sanctuary, and important regulators of our climate. But this key habitat faces a growing threat from increasingly frequent devastating forest fires. We've been seeing the effects of climate change for years now, in Germany too. This year's fires were catastrophic, and we can expect a repeat. The problem is exacerbated by rising temperatures, aridity and drought. Firefighters are squaring up to new challenges. The issue of fighting forest fires and wildfires has been neglected for a long time. It's been a minor part of firefighters' training programs. But now many firefighters are having a rethink. Throwing their weight behind new strategies and old know-how. We need to be changing the landscape, investing much more in prevention. It's our goal to completely recover the forest. Protecting our forests has never been more urgent. Can we save them? Showing the fire who's boss. That's the job of these firefighters in a coniferous forest on the Canary Islands. One of them is Tobias Hallas, a manager with At Fire, a German disaster management NGO. Forest fires are one of the organization's specializations. We're here on Gran Canaria, getting ready for the controlled burn that's going to happen here on the mountain. And we're putting on our protective gear. After another briefing, we'll be off. Hannes is joined by 18 other participants from four countries. The technique they're learning today may sound crazy at first. They're setting fire to the forest as a protective measure. Heat and drought mean Gran Canaria's pine forests are dry as a bone. They can go up in flames at any time. The prescribed burns are a tried and tested prevention method here. Firefighter Ana Tortosa Molina has been running courses for years. For a long time, we just focused on putting out the fire, fighting the fire. And at some point, we realized that you can't fight the fire. You've got to work with it. And that means tough physical work. Removing brush, creating fire breaks. The firefighters are from the UK, Poland, Germany and Spain. Tobias Hallas is a volunteer forest firefighter. In regular life, he's a paramedic. Like many of the others, he's paid the course fee out of his own pocket, 1,500 euros. We're doing it alongside our main jobs, giving it our heart and soul. Now we're also carrying out prescribed burns of increasingly large areas in Germany, and we're applying exactly what we've learned here. So I reckon it's money well spent and, most of all, time well invested. Prescribed burning is already common practice in many places, including the US, Australia and Southern Europe, and now it's playing an increasingly crucial role further north. We've been seeing the effects of climate change for years now, in Germany too. This year's fires were catastrophic, and we can expect a repeat. These exercises are being organized by the Spanish Paul Costa Foundation. The international organization specializes in forest fire management and prevention. I'll be in position three, Kai in one, Tobias two, and the rest of you behind me. After the arduous preparation, the fires are now lit. Participants start small fires with special canisters. The flames quickly rip through dry needles, brush and branches. The area we're burning now won't burn during the next vegetation phases. It'll all be nice and green for the next few years. Each fire emits climate killer CO2 into the atmosphere. But the controlled burn encourages the growth of new grasses, bushes and trees. They bind the previously emitted volume of CO2, making for a closed cycle. Through their efforts, Halas and the other volunteers are clearing forest debris and preventing the spread of a blaze that could jump to the trees. 
This approach to forest fire prevention is widely practiced in southern Europe. But firefighters in Northern Europe need more experience. Pau Costa Foundation co-founder Juan Carmaño is working to bridge that gap. Southern Mediterranean countries, we have, we have been suffering fires for many years, but now it's something new to many Northern European countries. So the network is everything because it's the way that we can exchange that experience and knowledge. The Gran Canaria exercise was tough, but instructive. It was a positive experience. We want to get people in Germany more familiar with the idea of tactical fires, as well as showing that fire doesn't always have to be a bad thing. The Ad Fire Association has demonstrated the importance of methods like these several times, like in 2022 in the eastern German state of Saxony. As a wildfire raged, specialists were called in to help. You can see how the humus underneath has completely burned out, leaving the entire area open. It will continue to slowly smolder and gradually disintegrate. The team of volunteers battles the ground fire with hose and shovels. Alexander Meyer is in charge. Anything brown has to go, it's all humus and it's burning and smoldering. Just like on Gran Canaria, they use brakes to keep the flames in check and carry out prescribed burns in the woods. This prevents the fire from devouring any more of the ground. It's exhausting, but it's working. The entire area up to there is completely secured by an exposed strip of soil. That'll slow things down. At Fire now has about 500 members. The association was founded 20 years ago to help southern European fire crews during peak wildfire season. The know-how gained on these missions is turning out to be useful back home. Germany's wildfire risk has been steadily rising since the 1970s. In recent years, more hot and dry periods have further increased the chance of forest fires. But until recently, local fire services have been focusing on other kinds of emergencies. A traffic accident, an apartment fire, requires different protective equipment than if I'm out in the woods. It's obvious from my clothing. It's all thin and a single layer, but still fireproof, so that you can work eight hours or a whole day in the blazing sunshine. The issue of fighting forest fires and wildfires has been neglected for a long time. It's been a minor part of firefighters' training. One of the goals of ADFIRE is to plug these knowledge gaps. That's why they're passing on know-how gathered abroad to firefighting colleagues in Germany. On the outskirts of Eberswalde in Brandenburg, two men are devising ways to save our forests. Engineer Carsten Brinkschulte and forestry scientist Jürgen Müller are going the high-tech route. So we've got our hot plate here. Now we're going to load it with the material. They've prepared a special experiment in their own lab. We're simulating a forest fire which emits the same gases that would be released in a real blaze. It's still just a very small fire, like a cigarette on the forest floor. At the other end is a device that could turn out to be something of a revolution. Sensors that learn how to sniff out a forest fire in its very early stages. These sensors sniff, smell the smoke and register that smell. And the next time, they're able to detect an incipient fire. They call their device an electronic nose. Software reveals whether the smoldering fire has been detected. Good. Uh, Sinan, please. Do you have the uh, first reaction? Yes. Okay. This is a good result. Look here. Increase. Very yeah. really mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. Fine. The test in the lab is a success. Bringschulter's team updates every improvement straight away. In early forest fire detection, every second counts. Yes, it would help us a lot, yeah. right? Because then it yeah. would be more flat. So here we've got the finished product with the solar cell and here the gas sensor with the membrane. 
The gas sensor is the key element of the electronic nose. With the help of artificial intelligence, it can detect individual gases in the air. At the tiniest wisp of smoke, it sounds the alarm. The technology is powered by climate-friendly solar energy. The 30-member international team is now working on enhancing the technology at two locations, because every forest smells different. Pringschulte and Müller are training the noses to recognize a variety of plants, so the sensors can also be used in forests around the world. I'm optimistic that what we've established in the lab can be implemented in the forest. Shift change at the fire station in the Galician town of Vigo in Spain. Firefighter Manuel Lopez Rodriguez is doing the handover. The 45 hose? The 45's there. Great, so it's all in order, right? Yes. Lopez Rodriguez has been working for the Bomberos for almost 30 years. He's deeply concerned about the sharp increase in forest fires, many of which now reach the edges of the town. For example, from here we can see a scorched eucalyptus forest on the other side of the bay. There was a fire there about three or four weeks ago. Of all the countries in Europe, Spain is one of the worst affected by forest fires. And 2022 was a record-breaking year. More than 300,000 hectares went up in flames. Is it really normal that every summer thousands of hectares of land burn? No, it's not natural at all. For sure, natural forest fires do break out, but not like this. So if we want to stop the forests from burning every summer, we need to start thinking about what kind of forest we want. Vigo is surrounded by highly flammable monocultures. That's why the firefighter is attacking the root of the problem and in his free time exchanging his firefighting gear for garden tools. A bit more. Is it moving? OK, let's go, pull. He's targeting fast-burning species of tree. We're using these clamps to pull these Australian blackwoods out of the ground with the whole root if possible. Even if some of it stays in the ground, the tree won't grow back. Huge monocultures of eucalyptus and Australian blackwood were planted in Spain for the wood and paper industry. The fast-growing trees are now out of control in many places, making them a serious fire risk. The plantations are dense and the ground as dry as a bone, ideal conditions for a forest fire. You can see here very clearly how close together the trees can be in an acacia forest. It might as well be gunpowder, especially if you consider that these trees are pyrophytes, a species that advances the spread of fire. Pyrophyte plants need fire to reproduce. Their seeds only germinate when exposed to high temperatures. So trees like the blackwood acacia thrive when it burns. But what's useful for the tree is a threat to us humans. That's why Manuel Lopez Rodriguez is slowly changing the fabric of the forest with the help of local school children. He founded his own association to carry out the work. Now, a community of volunteers looks after the forests around Vigo. This one's easy to pull out, but this one's much more difficult. That's a long branch and it's much more complicated. Once these natural fire accelerants have been removed, they're replaced by a variety of seedlings. Elder, oak, hazelnut, the volunteers plant many different species of tree. 
This creates a climate-friendly mixed forest that stays cooler and more humid, which deters fire. A few kilometers further on, the fruits of their labor are already visible. This is where the firefighter initiated his project. After 25 years, the area has grown into a healthy mixed forest. Let's see what species I can show you here. For example, you can see how the laurels are really thriving. Just like the oaks here. And look, there's a crab apple tree over there. The deciduous trees now form a dense canopy of leaves barely penetrable by the rays of the sun. Despite the high temperatures, it stays humid here, making for a fire-resistant forest. I'm very proud to have stuck with this project, a project run by an entire community. It's something that gives my life a purpose, because I believe we're at a decisive point in the history of civilization and humanity. If we don't take real action, then it's not looking good. That's also why the firefighter and environmentalist has some other interesting ideas up his sleeve, involving animals. In Brandenburg, the Beerlitz Fire Brigade is beginning a training exercise. Tobias Hallas and his colleagues from At Fire are sharing new forest fire know-how with the volunteer firefighters. Misha will do a pump and roll here, and Robin will take you through the tools. The goal for today is that each station can practice on the fire and keep it under control. Have fun and good luck. Group one there, group two over here, please. The fire brigades should learn to safely master the basics of fighting wildfires. That means conserving water, not least due to climate change. They also need to get out of the vehicle and use tools to put out the fire. After devastating fires in Berlitz, the local fire brigades sought help from the specialists. Robin Schiller demonstrates the tools needed for the job. This is a gorgwil. That's not a German name, it comes from Portugal and Spain. It's a multi-tool. It has its disadvantages. It's the heaviest tool, as you'll see when we start chopping. Although it's exhausting work, it'll help to stem the fire later. The exercise is a first for Andre Pasemann, who's been volunteering with the brigade for five years. Yeah, it's the first time I've used anything like this. We don't usually do basic stuff like this. But I'm really going for it. It's hard work. Parsemann is an engineer working in renewables. He's acutely aware of the danger that lies ahead. Brandenburg is one of the most arid states in Germany. That's partly due to the region's sandy terrain, which dries out quickly. As temperatures rise, more water evaporates. Plants and soil wither, exacerbating drought conditions. The tiniest spark could trigger a catastrophe. With desertification predicted for this region in the coming decades, what we're doing here is increasingly important. We're already feeling the effects of climate change. It's a similar picture even further to the north. Recent boreal forest fires in Siberia, Alaska and Canada wreaked havoc. CO2 emissions from wildfires have spiked drastically in recent years. In 2021, they released twice as much CO2 as global aviation. Preventing wildfires and putting the brakes on climate change, At Fire is preparing fire brigades for the future. Whenever we're out in the vehicle, we try to stay parallel. It's fine if the vehicle is a slight distance from the fire. Misha Henning demonstrates an efficient water-saving technique for putting out fire. Vicky, ready? Yes. Good. With the pump and roll method, the firefighters use thin hoses and work directly on the fire. They're training for the real thing. Forest fire expert Tobias Haller sets the field on fire. If the flames don't jump the brakes, the Beerlitz firefighters have done everything right. 
Now you can see what we learned this morning. I've got a fire that's totally wind-driven. If there wasn't a break there, you could almost trap the fire from behind. The cleared strips defy the fire. Only the wind could dangerously fan the flames now. The professionals demonstrate what happens then. Misha, spot fire, westerly direction. Spot fire to the west. Misha, roger that. Move in. The firefighters get the flames quickly under control with just a few litres of water. Any embers are put out with tools. For the Berlitz Brigade, this was an illuminating day. Yeah, it was great, really interesting, also to see what's possible without water. There are plenty of takeaways. I learned a lot. Things I'd never done before. Tobias Hannas and his crew are also pleased. We provide the impetus and then it's up to the volunteer brigades to run with the ideas. They're training ahead of the next wildfire season, which is starting earlier and earlier here in Germany too. In Spain, prevention work counts on the support of four-legged firefighters. Almost 300 goats live here on a farm in Galicia, northern Spain. Firefighter Manuel Lopez Rodriguez hopes they'll help him better protect his forest from any future blazes. Hi, Manuel. I've heard so much about you, I really wanted to meet you. Good or bad stuff? No, only good, only good. Precisely how these goats can help to prevent wildfires is demonstrated by the animal's owner, Gemma San Pedro Jimenez. The farm is in central Galicia, surrounded by expansive woodlands. To stop these forests from catching fire, Gemma San Pedro Jimenez leads her goats to pasture in the wood every day. Each animal munches its way through up to three kilos of grass and hay every day. The animals spend all their time grazing on the undergrowth. Along with grass, small branches, dry wood and leaves are also on the menu, all of it highly flammable. This is a gorse bush, one of the biggest contributors to the spread of fire. When they dry out in the summer, it's like they form highways for the flames. But here, the goats keep the gorse in check. It's a natural and effective way to prevent fire. The farmer lives from the sale of the goat's meat. Forest maintenance is a simple but practical add-on. In the past, agroforestry with animals was also commonplace in countries like Germany. The forest was used as a pasture for goats, sheep and cows. But as livestock were moved into stalls, the practice was forgotten. A current European study offers proof that these animal species reduce deadwood in forests. Bringing goats back into the woods can considerably lessen the risk of fire. Agroforestry practices are declining because rural populations are also in decline. Hardly anyone lives in the country anymore. There aren't any shepherds. That's because it's getting harder and harder to make a living from farming if your business isn't intensive agriculture. I'd like to see if my experience could serve as an example. Manuel Lopez Rodriguez is sold on the idea of animals carrying out fire prevention work. He wants to bring goats into his woods very soon. Our society needs many more people like Gemma. People with a vision, with conviction, courage and engagement. She wants to make the world a better place. Rekindling old traditions to protect the forests, a strategy that could be exported to other nations. In Brandenburg, things are getting serious. It's crunch time for the electronic forest fire sniffers. Carsten Bringschulte and his team are testing the early warning system. Will it work? Okay. So bring, bring the green material here, please, close to the fireball. Forestry scientist Jürgen Miller has been fascinated by wildfires since he was a boy. 
I grew up here in Schorfheide. I saw a wildfire at the age of 10. I saw the destruction and the animals running away. And it stayed with me. The forestry scientist knows that the local conifers pose a particular risk. 70% of all forests in Brandenburg are pine forests, a veritable powder keg. They catch fire quickly and take the flames to residential areas. Prengschulter hopes his electronic noses will put a stop to that. Time really is running out. We need to act rapidly on a huge scale to counter this threat, a threat that's already there and that we're all sensing and seeing. First, the team sets up a network of sensors aimed at detecting fire gases and sounding the alarm. One sensor is enough for one hectare. A sensor like this costs around 50 euros. To ensure help arrives as fast as possible, the signal has to get through. It happens a lot. You're walking in the woods and at some point there's no mobile signal. To solve that problem, we're setting up our own network in the forest using what's known as mesh gateways. These mesh gateways function like internet routers powered by solar energy. The sensors carry the alarm signal to the gateway on the edge of the forest. From here, the data is sent to an app via satellites and radio masts. Today's test fire is secured by the Volunteer Fire Brigade. We've got a larger group today. They want to observe as well. Usually, the fire brigade is only aware of a fire once smoke has already started rising over the forest. But the sensors report the fire as soon as it starts on the ground. Each green spot on the computer marks a sensor. The first one's already gone off, right here. That one. The second, the smoke's really thick now. Oh, that's amazing. That's brilliant. Look how fast. You've seen fires, how the forests burn, and we're able to locate a potential fire before it gets underway. A little mini fire. The sensors really do ensure firefighters are ahead of the game. The smoke hasn't even reached the treetop and they've already sensed it. This early detection would give us a time advantage of 10 minutes or a quarter of an hour at least. The system could potentially nip destructive blazes in the bud. Customers in Germany, the US, Spain and Greece already ordered sensors ahead of the 2023 wildfire season. An incentive for Bringschulter and Müller to further hone the technology. We'll develop other sensors to measure ground humidity and growth density. Our vision is to provide the forest with comprehensive protection and not just against the acute threat of wildfires. This year too, Europe and other regions around the world are facing the prospect of new, perhaps even more devastating wildfires. To protect our forests, we need to act. There's no time to waste.